Did you know that in our gospel lesson, seven total verses, we get three different stories. Even for Mark, the shortest gospel, the man who made immediately his favorite word, even for Mark, that is impressive. Each of these three stories deserve their own sermon. Today, I want to tell you how each of these stories share a theme, a theme that carries not only the day, but I believe the entire season of Lent. It is a theme that I know from personal experience can be a source of comfort when things go crazy. The theme is this, God made a decision. God made a decision. So let's get to the three stories in our gospel. With these stories, we are going to go on a roller coaster of emotion. The first story is Jesus' baptism. God appears, tearing apart the heavens, not acting like a creator, but acting like a father, a parent wanting to get the best view possible for this important moment in his son's life. And as a proud papa, God proclaims, You, Jesus, are my son. You are my beloved. I am well pleased with you. This is a story of a father, a parent, who declares love to his child. And even though it is not stated, as a parent, for those of you who are parents, grandparents, godparents, favorite aunts and uncles, you can feel that when God says those words, that God is also saying, Jesus, I am going to do everything in the world to protect you. Because a long time before this baptism, God made a decision. Then we get a second story, Jesus being immediately driven out by the Spirit into the wilderness. It's a very strange story because right after declaring his love for Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, sends him into the wilderness. To me, this is like dropping your child off on the first day of college, giving him or her 20 bucks and saying to them well best of luck to you see you at christmas and then just driving off the last thing you want to do when your child is about to face the great unknown is to let your child face it alone on the surface it looks like that is what god is doing the wilderness in the Greek language means being in a state of isolation, desolate, deserted. This wilderness can signify a lonely place where there are no people and where there are many dangers to the body and to the soul. Thus, a perfect place for Satan to pop up. The same word used for wilderness in this part of the gospel it is used later on in chapter 1 to describe the quiet place, the refuge that Jesus goes to rest after healing Peter's mother-in-law and many others. So it is this deserted place that the Spirit leads Jesus. And it is where Satan shows up to tempt Jesus. If God loves Jesus so much, why leave him alone in the wilderness, alone to fight Satan? However, keep in mind, the gospel does not say God is alone. Jesus is not alone in this story. The angels are there to serve him, to be at his service. They are there because a long time before the temptation, God made a decision. 
Then we have the third story, which starts off bad with the news that John has been arrested. But as John is taken away, the news takes a turn toward the good when Jesus makes his public debut. He comes to Galilee and proclaims the good news, the gospel of God. The good is not only in that Jesus proclaims, the good is also in what Jesus proclaims. Because long before Jesus appears, God made a decision. You are probably wondering what that decision was. Here it is. Today's first lesson is the conclusion to the flood story. God has destroyed the earth because of human sin. While the earth has been destroyed, God saves Noah, his family, and the animals. After the flood, God is left with a choice. What happens when, not if, when humanity sins again? God knows the people are not going to be on their best behavior forever. In fact, in chapter 9, we are only a few verses away before Noah curses his son Ham. We are just two chapters away from the Tower of Babel. People are going to sin. God could choose the whole flood option again. It seemed to work the first time, right? God could choose another option. Who knows? Maybe he'll choose a meteor. It's God, so anything is possible. God could have continued with divine destruction. Instead, God decided not to do that. Rather than choosing violence, God chose love. To use words from our psalm today, in verse 5, rather than blasting creation, God blesses creation with a covenant that has no expiration date. And because God is upright, as the psalm says, that means God is honest. God does not go astray. God does not go out of bounds. So God's decision will not change. God decided to stick with us. That decision meant that God would come to us when it was time, when it was time to change the world, which then leads to what Jesus proclaims in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom has come near to us. That's very important for us to hold on to. The kingdom traveled to us. God did the moving. God did the walking, the traveling, the dying, moving toward us to where we are. We do not have, we do not have to walk in darkness to get to the light. The light comes to us. Because God decided a long time ago to choose love, that meant God was there at Jesus' baptism. God was there during the wilderness, and God was there during Jesus' ministry. God was always there. And God is always here at our baptism, during our ministries, and especially in our wilderness. Earlier I said this theme, God's decision, carries not only the day, but I believe the entire season of Lent. It is a theme that I know from personal experience this week that it can be a source of comfort when things go crazy. Monday morning, I traveled to Durham to participate in a Chrism Mass. It's a service for rostered leaders of the Synod to come together to be renewed and blessed and reaffirmed in the vows they made at ordination. It was a lovely service. My friend, Pastor Cassie Overcash, assistant to the bishop, preached a wonderful homily, and she said, in reference to Mark, things happen fast. Immediately from joy to wilderness, good to bad, calm to chaos. She was a prophet that day. 
After the service, I got to catch up and have lunch with my good friend, Pastor Daniel Pugh. As of today, the new senior pastor at Christ the King in Cary, North Carolina. Hello, Daniel. Actually, he's probably preaching, so he's probably not watching this as he's doing that, but I'm very proud of him. And then later that night, we had our church meeting, and we were done in an hour, right? And I was like, okay, I get to go home and put the kids to bed. It was good. It was calm. And then I called my mom. Instead of my mom answering, my sister did. And she said that mom had not been answering the phone. So she and her husband, Mike, went over there and they realized that my mom had fallen and she was disoriented. So instead of going home and reading to Paul, I sat on the bed waiting for an update. About an hour later, they decided to take my mom to the emergency room. And that's when the flashbacks started. Flashbacks to April of last year when my mom went through a very long illness. And at that time, it did not look good. I didn't sleep well that night, thinking that any moment I was about to get a call or a message and that it wasn't going to be good news. But then I remember what God decided a long time ago. Jonathan, I was there for Noah, I was there for Jesus, and I am here for you. And that decision was seen and heard. The next morning, I found out that my mom was released from the hospital at 3 a.m. And she was diagnosed with the flu. And while making plans to go to Winston, the church staff said, go, we got this, be with your mom. And they did an amazing job all week, especially with the Bowerman funeral, where we had, this place was packed with people who had never been here before, and they did a masterful job. Pastor Mark preached a wonderful sermon. And then later on, with Ash Wednesday services, again, a great job. And then Kristen said, go, we got this, be with your mom. So I got to spend time with my mom, caring for her, giving my sisters a well-deserved break. And like all the times that she cared for me, I even asked her to make sure she gave me a five-star review on Yelp just to make sure I was doing right. Now, all the while this was happening, I was receiving messages upon messages of love and prayers and support. On Wednesday, Valentine's Day, I, I realized it was going to be the first Valentine's Day I had missed with Kristen in the 18 years that we had known each other. But then I got a message from Jamie Armstrong, member here, right up there, one of our wonderful media ministers. And she rightly pointed out that while I was not with Kristen, I did get to spend the day with my first Valentine. And it's very true. Every moment, every action, those were moments of angels waiting on me in my wilderness time. That is how God works. When you have your wilderness time, focus on the angels God has sent you and the angels God will send you. The people who send support, the people who are there in person for you, God will send you the angels that you need. Because God made that decision a long time ago. On behalf of my family, I thank you. Amen.